have something really special coming up, and that is uh, a novella that she wrote, right. Brian's Goals, and it comes out in January. And I think um, what makes it so exciting is you actually had a, a big hand in in making sure that the visuals for the yeah. story were exactly what you're imagining, so people can actually see, you know, without just the words, but with the, the you know, the pictures, the graphics. Um, how did that project come about? Uh, I had, when I first sold uh, The Warded Man, I was working a full-time job, and so I took a big chunk of the advance money and I set it aside to build a website and do some promotion and things, because you can't count on your publishers to do that stuff for you. Every author has to do a lot of their own footwork. So I was working at a PR company. I knew how to hire artists. I knew how to build a website. I knew how to do these things. So I had that skill set already. So I went out looking for artists. I, I trolled around online. I looked at artists' websites. And I found someone whose work I thought reflected what I wanted to express. Um, I have an art background myself. I have a degree in art history. So, um, and I talked to her. I was, I, we talked about the symbol magic first. I wanted her to design wards. Uh, well, and her and name's her name's Lauren Cannon. Lauren Cannon. Mm -hmm. uh, what what is her background? What did she work on before this that she you saw that you liked? I looked at her online portfolio, which was mostly stuff that she had done in art school. She was actually still finishing her art degree uh, when I contacted her, um, but she'd also done a lot of professional work, like designing magic cards and, and and painting and drawing for that sort of thing. Because she was so talented, she was already getting work before she was even out of school. Um, and so I had long conversations with her about what I wanted the wards to look like, how the design should be, and we kind of went back and forth with a lot of sketches until we had a, a nice group of them that I could use as website, and I made them the buttons on my website, mm -hmm. and then I, I made sure that I had bought the rights to them so that I could just give them to anyone. So I sent them to the publishers, and I said, here, this is free, you don't have to do anything, but uh, you're welcome to use them. And that had the exact effect that I wanted to, is that every publisher in the world used them. So now, like, when the book comes out in Turkey, or the book comes out in Poland, or, or, or Portugal, or whatever, they're using those same symbols. So it's become a unifying factor everywhere. Um, and th I felt the same way about the characters. I wanted to brand some of the characters first, before a publisher got a chance to do that. A lot of times, the artists and designers for a publisher don't have time to read the books. They're designing covers for a ton of things. Mm -hmm. And so they don't have reference material. And I wanted to provide that reference material so that they would know, like, the author approved, this is what the character looks like. Um, and so I hired Lauren to do this one painting for the, for the website of Arlen that is amazing. It's, it's, it came out so much better than I ever expected. And because of that, we built a really good relationship. And I've been hiring her to do additional work since then. And so Subterranean Press did my first novella, The Great Bazaar, and they used that painting of Arlen for the cover. So when I finished the second novella and they decided they were going to print that too, they said, oh, you can use your artist if you want. If you want to be art director on this job, go right ahead. And I was absolutely thrilled to do that. So I was able to commission her to do a cover and nine illustrations throughout the novella and got to work very closely talking about what we wanted, looking at sketches, and that was something that I had done professionally in PR. I was an art director, so it, it was a skill set that I already had, and it was great to be able to use it for something that I loved uh, rather than promoting somebody else's <laughs> products. Or, you know. Well, it's really unusual for the writer to have a say necessarily in the, what their covers look like, in what, you know, in what the iconography of the, the book is. A lot of them, they hand over the text and yeah. then the publisher takes it from there, but you've you've got a chance to really make it consistent and make it, you know, kind of your, what's in your brain come to yeah. life. <laughs> well, I, I mean, th with the major publishers, that's the case. Like, you don't really, you, they'll show you the cover sometimes, but you don't really get a big say in those sorts of things. Uh, Subterranean Press has been really great with that because they're a small company and a small press, uh, and you can work very closely with them. And they, I think, can tell when, uh, a writer has that skill set and can apply that to the work and when they can't. And Subterranean, all of their books are gorgeous. Like they make, their whole business model is small collectible books, uh, always in hardcover, always with good production value. And so uh, I think it was a match made in heaven and it was really great to be able to, to get into the, to the design of it on that level. But I also like 
I was kind of conniving the whole time, like making a point of branding my characters. Like the <laughs> characters that were most important to me, I hired someone to draw them right before someone had a chance to draw them wrong. And I've seen since then, there have been illustrations of those characters that are clearly derivative of what I first did. And that was intentional. And it was, I'm really <laughs> glad that I did it. <laughs> Uh, so the, the scheming, the scheming <laughs> author making sure that you get to know what his characters <laughs> really look like. Yeah.